Good day guys, um, just bringing you a fast castle tutorial, this time without requiring any deer lures, so I guess this will just be a bit more of a generalist one that you can use in more situations when you're playing, basically. Um, I guess to begin with, I guess we'll just quickly talk about why you do a fast castle normally in a team game when you're in the pocket position. So that means you're the one or two inside players. So like I say, you've got two flanks and then two pockets. So they're slightly further back from the enemy, and so it's less likely to be scout rushed or trushed or something similar. And they've just got a little bit more safety in the early game. And so you try to use that time to age up faster and be able to use the better technology and units that you gain when you get to castle age. Uh, I would not ever recommend this for a 1v1. Uh, minimum you'd probably want to do a drush fast castle purely because you don't have any military units created until around the 17 minute mark and uh, even just two militia could really ruin the build order. Like if they can keep you off gold for 30 or 40 seconds and that's going to slow you down by a good minute when you want to age up to castle age. So we'll just go to the build order now for the initial bit. We've got six on sheep and then we're going to send our next four villagers to wood and they're going to build a lumber camp and they get their pretty basic stuff so far. Um, with the sheep scouting, don't feel that you have to be have to sheep scout to be able to do these sort of builds. Like, yes, they help you a lot. Like, just here we can see we've gotten all this line aside at the back here, this line around here. Like, it's, it is super no. useful and helpful. Like, it, it's a lot more than just a scout. Like, those three sheep are a good 10% of our scouting information at this stage of the game. But if you don't micro well, like, if you're not completely down your hotkeys and you're not used to flicking between your scout and you scout in the three or two or three, however many sheep you have working around, and you have to go to your scout and then tell it to go there, go to sheep, tell it to go there, sheep, other sheep, and then you go to the town center, make some villages, press idle villa a couple of times, go check these villages, and it's just a lot of micro that you have to do, where if you're not used to it and it's easy to make a mistake and have two or three villagers idle for 15 seconds or you forget to make villagers for a while and better to have slightly worse scouting and have a more consistent and stronger eco early because like, this scout will eventually find what well, it would have found these two sheep in the boar up here when it went round like it takes a little bit longer but you'd still find them unless you've got a really dodgy map um, uh, the keen eyed amongst you will have noticed that I said six on sheep and then four to wood, but I've sent three to wood and then one to get the boar and then another one to wood. Um, that's just, I guess, a personal quirk, where by building this house before this boar, this boar lure should get underneath the town center at approximately the same time the sheep finishes, whereas if I sent four to wood and then went for the boar, I'd have to skip the house and get another villager to build it. Or I'd have to go halfway through the fifth sheep, and that's just, just a little bit more inefficient. Okay, so after the four to wood, one to boar, I'm gonna throw the next four villages over to berries. And that'll just give us a bit more food to keep making villages. Here look we got the boar in, and that sheep just finished, perfect timing. Uh, also, you'll see here, I'm locking this villager in with the berries. So, yeah. Yep, there's the mill. And that just means that he can't be attacked by a stray scout or whatever that's coming past. And it just gives him a little bit of protection. And if you can do that, like if you can do it with your gold or your wood line, like here, I think you could maybe stick a villager in there. Like it's, it's pretty useful, and it means that you can get more villagers in contact with the mill and the berries. Wrong, like this I'm chick, wrong. she only needs to turn around and drop off. Same with him, and I'll put another villager on this berry. And then they're all as efficient as possible. 
Unlike this guy, we have to walk around her, which takes like an extra half a second each time. Um, something else you should note when you lock a villager in like this is that they won't automatically start collecting resources like normal villagers will. For some reason, the fact that they're stuck like that causes them to spaz out a little bit and they decide, oh no, what do I do? And they just sort of stand there for a bit. So, as soon as you hear the sound for your mill being built, you just need to go over there and tell them to go back to work. Um, here we are, we started chucking our farms. As soon as you get 60 wood, start building farms. Generally, using your injured villages where possible. And we're heading off to get our next boar. Which you can either use the next villager after your four berries, or what I generally prefer is when the boar gets to about 175 food. So if your boar's a little bit late, or a little bit earlier, then you might have to go get your second one a little bit later, a little bit earlier. And it just helps you get a bit of a better timing on it. Um, you see here that I'm not making a farm just yet, because I'm planning on getting this villager to make the farm once she gets back with the boar, because she's going to lose some health. And also, I used her to collect these sheep, because the scout was over here, and if he had to go get them, then he'd walk through all of this bit here that we've already scouted, and that would just waste his time. Whereas this village is going here to get the boar anyway, may as well save the time. Um, a little bit of idle there, I should have gone for the boar a little bit earlier. But it's not too bad. And the boar lure itself ends up being pretty dodgy. And I'm about to get housed. For a couple of seconds. Because right now this boar, like, it's two tiles to your TC, so it's okay. Like, it's not out here or something. It's not too much of a walking time. But this is a really shit spot for when you want to build a farm. Because if you've ever watched a farm, they only use these four tiles out of the nine. And that boar and the villagers there happen to be blocking all the t most of the tiles that the villagers walk on. So that's that's not too good. Okay, well, we'll just quickly jump back to the order. Six to sheep, four to wood, one to boar, four to berries, and then we put another four villagers onto the boar. And then we take a couple and we make some farms. And then that should get us to 20 pop, including the scout. And then we send our next five, including this guy here, over to wood. And that should take us up to 25 population. And then we're pretty close to clicking up to feudal age. Something else you should always watch. That guy there got a little bit stuck. So if you're not really doing anything, go check out your villages and make sure they're working efficiently. Now because of these villagers blocking the farm there, I just sent the villager back to boar. Where is she? There she is. Until the boar is finished, because she wasn't gathering, she was just sort of stuck there. And if she's not working, then that's just wasting the time. And that's always something you want to watch. And then once this boar's finished, they're all going to go to sheep, and one of them's going to go back to the farm. There we are, back on the farm. Awesome. Now we've got two sheep underneath the TC, and then the other two a little bit further away, just to make sure that we really just don't kill them early. You always want to only work on one piece of meat food at a time, so one sheep, one deer, one boar, wherever possible. Because like if these villagers stopped gathering, this sheep would lose. I think it's like one food every two or three seconds, just through the meat rotting away. And you want to try to minimise that as much as possible. So you put as many villagers as you need or you can onto a single food source to minimise the rotting basically. Like, because if each of these villagers had two on each of those three sheep, then I'd lose 30 food, 30, 40, 50 food between the three sheep. That's, that's a lot of waste. Okay, but as we'll see, we are now on 25 food, not 25 food, 25 population. So we're going to send our last three villagers over to gold. Admittedly, this is a kind of a bad gold mine. It's on the top of a hill. You can't build a town center around it. A bit hard to wall, but this is just showing the build order, basically. So he's gonna lock himself in, just like we did with the berries, and then he's gonna build a mi mining camp. There are. And then two more villages. And then we're gonna do loom, and then go to feudal age with a population of 28. Pretty well so far. Shutting down our 
six farm. These six farms should be a perfect amount to get us up to Castle Age. Because including eating the last sheep and a half and the four villages on berries, that'll give us plenty of food to get to Castle Age and make villages in Feudal Age and do some other stuff afterwards. Um, in a second though, I'm going to make a seventh farm. Um, uh, if you don't have an efficient lumber camp, I would not make a seventh one. Because as we'll see when we get to Feudal Age, we've only just got enough wood to build stable and a blacksmith. And the barracks before we even get there. So it's... It was kind of a bad idea. And also you'll note that I've got all of my villages at a single lumber camp. I'm at not, I should have nine villages, nine lumberjacks. That's about the maximum amount you can fit comfortably with a single lumber camp. Because, as you see here, all the villagers are walking around approximately two tiles each. And that, that's pretty good. But if we had, say, 12 villagers here, then they'd have to start chopping trains a little bit further away. And they're just going to bump as they walk past each other a little bit more. Alright, let's wait for this. Oh, I think someone to finish. Oh, yeah, she's almost finished. She's going to sort of bump into this villager as she walks past. Hopefully. Just to prove my point. Okay, not really. Alright, never mind then. But, in general, they'll just sort of get stuck a little bit sometimes, and it just means they're not gathering wood efficiently. So when we sent those five villagers to wood, if this forest line was a bit more dodgy, not too good, let's see what's... Mm, yeah, maybe that one there, if it was that straight line, then I would probably have built another lumber camp with those five villagers. So I definitely wouldn't have been able to do the seventh farm, and they would have gone over here. Um, we've just finished off the last of our eight sheep, so they're just going to chop a straggler tree at the town centre to get us a little bit more wood for buildings. And as you'll see, we're what, 80% of the way to feudal age, we've already got the food, and each of these villages just needs to drop off once to give us the gold to go to castle age. So that's pretty good, we should be able to afford to do a economy upgrade, or two in the dark, in the feudal age, which will be awesome. So these two villages are going to build us a stable. These, she is going to build us a blacksmith. Of course, we're doing the stable first because it takes longer to build than the blacksmith. Blacksmith. There we are. And we've queued up two villages, which we are also going to send to gold. Because you need about four on gold to keep up night production from a single stable. I will generally do five, so there's just a little bit of excess gold in case something goes wrong. So like if I have to run away from my gold mine for 30 seconds because the enemy has some archers or something, then I've got enough to make an extra night or two and hopefully be able to retake the gold. Um, also, we're doing double bit axe because we've got the food. We could almost have done horse collar before going up, but that would have required us to force drop some other things, so we're not going to do that just yet. We'll just wait for the food to come in naturally and then do horse collar. Hopefully. Alright, but that's that's the basics of this build order. Um, I guess I'll sort of put this into perspective with the deer luring build order. Because we've had to lay an extra, I think, two, maybe three farms, we're not going to have the wood to go for two stables and two town centers. Because we had to spend an extra. 120, 180, 240 wood. So this is, while it is more generous, it is slightly less effective. See, look, there we have got a villager stuck. That's the sort of thing that you want to look for, and that's why having too many villagers at a single camp is bad. Okay, that was just sort of a little bit of a digression, but I think that, that should be fairly obvious. Like, even if we milled the deer, which is an option instead of those two farms, well, those two farms, that's still 100 wood that you have to spend, where if you lured them, you wouldn't have to spend it. And yes, you've got a little bit more scouting, but the scouting's pretty good, we know exactly where the enemy is. Gold, gold stone, wood, woods, there's a town centre in the middle somewhere. 
And the scout has actually been idle quite a lot in the last couple of minutes. And, oh, we're also doing the armor upgrade. Awesome. So our knight should be pretty strong. I'm gonna have three melee and range armor. So it'll be pretty good versus any archers or town centers when they're running around fighting and stuff. Which is exactly what we want. Almost finished our berries. These villages will probably go to wood. Uh, we might make a farm or two, depending on how our food count is going. But yeah, pretty much go to wood so that we can get up a town center somewhere. Once we get to Castle Edge. And as we can see, we've got enough gold there for four nights. We've got enough food to do four nights and some villages. So we should be pretty good. I think we're going to make one farm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, um, yeah that's basically the build order, you should be aiming for anywhere between 16 and 17 minutes with this build with a minimum of my minimum of idle time in your town centre. But don't be disappointed if you only get an 18 minute time on your first go, especially if you're new to the game and you don't use a lot of hotkeys. Because hotkeys are a key part of being able to do things quickly and... It's pretty daunting first coming into this game and seeing how, I guess, strict the build orders are. Like, if you accidentally... If you only put two villages on gold, then that's going to slow down your castle time. If you only made four farms instead of six, you're not going to have the food to go up. Like, small things like that. So, yeah, like, when I first started playing, like, semi-competitively, about, I don't know, about a year ago, I could get, frankly, about 19 minutes to Castle Age. Probably with less villages than this, I would have been super happy. And I guess as you play more, you'll just start to get a better feel for where to send your villages and how to better improve your economy. Um, if you have any questions specific to this build or this map or anything like that, uh, just post them in the comments below. Um, I will also leave a link to my email address so you can send in recorded games for me to have a look at if you want some personal advice on what you're doing a little bit wrong. Uh, no promises that I'll be able to get back to you quickly, like real life sometimes gets in the way which is a bit annoying, but I'll try to at least give you some advice in your first 20 minutes. Like, because especially this video, we're going in about real time, which is really annoying. Uh, I prefer it if recorded games actually went fast forward, so that I'd spend less time watching the boring stuff and better able to talk about the important things in builds or analyzing games and stuff. Um, and I will also write the build order. So six sheep, four wood, boar, etc. Down below so you can copy and paste it, put it in a word document, write it down or something if you want to. Like so don't feel the need to have to keep going back and uh, idle villagers. Keep going back and trying to write it down as I say it. Um, I probably should have mentioned that at the start. But oh well. Hopefully you'll understand it. So yeah, we've got four nights, attacking about nineteen minutes. Should be making another one or two. We've got plus one armor, so this is this is a decent build. Um, as you get better, you'll probably try to go for closer to 26 or 27 population in Dark Age, because that'll just make you a little bit faster. And the, there are definitely more efficient build orders out there, but as a basic one for first learning the fast castle, this is really good. And you saw I got about 16, 20. 16 minutes, 20 seconds, up to Castle Age, and that's that's pretty much the optimum time to get to Castle Age, that sort of a time. Should have killed that scout there. But yeah, okay, uh, I hope this will help some people. Um, don't forget to ask questions and stuff. I should replace this lumber camp already. They're walking too much by now. Should build one right in that corner. Oh well. Ah, uh, and I'm housed. Perfect way to end it. 
Um, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Oh, wait, I'll go have a look at the stats first. Just in case you want to compare your builds. Economy-wise, this is all pretty good. Um, you'll notice we weren't taking stone, because we just don't need stone at this stage. We'll probably start mining some stone around 25 minutes, maybe a bit before then, to make some more town centers, or go for castles if possible. 16, 15, a castle. Um, with this build, you can probably get 30 to 35 minute input times while going for two stables. Probably, if you could manage your economy well. The yeah, builds, yep. Okay, this time, thank you for watching. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, all that jazz.